for the final time, we are free! Here in the final season, season 10 of the NCAA Snickers Cup Series, we are getting into the home stretch of the regular season's final few races. This is where it gets down to crunch time. These are the last minute opportunities for drivers to try and get themselves to victory lane, or if they've been to victory lane, to try and solidify themselves inside the top 30 in points to be able to get themselves a spot in the final chase ever in Snickers Cup Series history. A lot of drivers have already all but clinch themselves spots in this season's chase, but there's still a lot of big question marks on who's going to fill in some of those final few spots in the 10 race battle for the final ever Snickers Cup Series Championship. We are here live at the place that started it all, Daytona International Speedway, getting to go racing under the lights here tonight for 24 laps. The last time we were here, Trent Dunham broke the curse, broke the winless streak, taking his first ever Snickers Cup Series Daytona 500 tonight. What kind of racing are we going to see, and who's going to be the winner of this track? As we've said, restricted play tracks, they always seem to cater to the underdog, whether it be the driver struggling in points or that driver that just hasn't quite been able to get the victory. Will we see somebody be able to do that here tonight? You think of a lot of different drivers here that have won at Daytona, that are struggling in points, like Charles Sanford, like Sean Henley, like Sean Galligan. They want to go to victory lane here tonight, but then you got drivers that are running well in the point stands, but haven't found victory lane yet this season, including rookie Austin Mongold, Jabo Joshua Collard, John Cittadino, two-time champion Anthony McCrory, who won this race many seasons back on fuel strategy. That's all going to come to a head tonight. We're going to find out who's going to be going to victory lane here in our 21st event of the season. It's also our patriotic night where we honor our veterans and those that are currently in the military forces. Just about everybody on track running in some way or other a patriotic scheme with a little bit of red, white, and blue on their machines. So we want to take this opportunity to thank all of our members of our military forces at home and abroad, also those that have previously served and those that served with the ultimate sacrifice their lives. We want to thank each and every one of you for those that um, were lost in uh, battles for our country's freedom. We salute you and your families as well because obviously your families um, made a great sacrifice as well. So... Tonight, it's all about the troops, it's all about the military, but these drivers as well, for them, it's all about the chase for the championship. So we are about ready to go green. Jacob Lawler will start on the pole position. Lawler, who picked up his second win of the season just a couple of weeks ago at the debuting track of... Oh, I was at Louisiana. That's what it was. For some reason, I was thinking New Jersey, and that wasn't right. At Louisiana Speedway, he may be all but solidified himself a spot in the chase of the championship with that second victory. He comes in third in points. I don't know for certain. I haven't worked the calculators, but I think it's mathematically impossible for him to fall outside of the top 30 in points now. So Jacob Lawler may have all but locked himself up a spot in the chase. Now what he's looking for is a third victory. Why? Because once the chase begins, based on how many victories you have that season, you get bonus points towards the chase. And so Jacob Lawler would love to be able to head into the chase as the number one seed in the first round. Alongside of him, former Truck Series champion Chris Dullerton is going to try and go for his first win of the season. It's been a long winless streak for that 33 team and Chris Dullerton. He has not won a Snickers Cup Series race in a long time, mostly because he spent most of his career over in the Truck Series, the 33 being driven by drivers like Madison Seaver, Megan Atkins over here in Snickers Cup, but Chris Dalton would still love to be able to find Victory Lane. He's currently sitting 32nd 
in the points. Johnny Gardner, he was a strong driver in the 500 last, uh, uh, you know, when we came here uh, for the beginning of the season, and he's back here again with a good qualifying result of third place. Johnny Gardner, it was really the the good run he had at Daytona that really sparked a good few races at the beginning of the season for him, but now things have kind of fallen off. He finds himself mired 23rd in points and still winless. Maybe he can take the checker flag here tonight. And Sean Henley, it's been such a struggling season for the last season up for this driver. Former Snickers Cup Series champ, but he finds himself outside the top 35 in points. He's just trying to get a win if he can here to try and turn his season around. Now, it's not mathematically impossible, but really, if he doesn't get a win tonight, he's really going to have a big, big mountain to have to climb to try and see if he can get himself into the chase. So tonight, it's really all about the win for Sean Henley. And then rounding out the top five, another former winner at this very event, Michael Norman, who actually ended up uh, winning the first chase race, which was at this event last season. And that locked him into the next round of the chase. He comes in here tonight rolling off from the fifth position. So we'll see what he can do as Michael Norman will try and go to victory lane in back-to-back -back seasons in this event. So without further ado, we're going to go down trackside. Now, he was supposed to join me in the commentator's booth for this race, but uh, unfortunately, with the fact that I record so early in the morning, he wasn't awake yet. So how apropos is it, though, that the hometown driver, this is his home track, and Michael Norman, the defending winner of this race, is going to give us those most famous words in motorsports. Let's go down trackside now for the command. All right, drivers. Welcome to Daytona. Buckle up and let's have fun. Drivers, start your engine. Man given, engines fired. 42 drivers roll off of pit road. There's a lot of former winners here at Daytona in this field. You go back as far as sixth place, you find Charles Sanford, former Daytona 500 winner. I see Trent Dunham rolling off from ninth place. Could he go for the Daytona sweep perhaps? He won the 500 during the daytime. Can he win the night race here? You also got Jacob Lawler. He's a former Daytona 500 winner starting off from the pole position. And I'm trying to find him. I can't see him right now. But Danny Wells ended up winning this race two seasons ago when he ended up winning the first two races of the chase back in season eight, even though he was at the time a non-chaser. So we got a lot of former winners of the Daytona 500 and the second Daytona race. Only time will tell who's going to take the checkered flag here tonight. I mentioned Anthony McCrory, a former winner of this very event. You got Levi McIntyre. He's a former Daytona 500 winner. A lot of drivers who have won here at this track want to be able to utilize this type of a racetrack to get themselves to victory lane for either the first, second, or third time this season in their quest to lock themselves up a spot in this season chase for the championship. Points coming into this race are much more spread out than they have been in the last couple of weeks. Trent Dunham is the points leader by 16 points over Austin Mongold. 19 points back to the pole sitter Jacob Lawler. Tim Walsh moved up to fourth last week. He's 21 points out. Joshua Collard fifth. He's 23 points out. And the rest of the top 10 coming into tonight's race. Dougie Shears, John Cittadino, Joshua Michaels, Anthony McCurry, and Cody Lamas. The top 10 in points separated by 65 points coming into tonight's race at Daytona. But here we go, getting ready to go green. We are racing here tonight at Daytona. Jacob Lawler, interesting that he, he got to the line first, but then he moved up the racetrack going into one. And now Johnny Gardner is going to capitalize on that, and he's going to go to the inside line for the top position. They're almost four wide back there. That was Dylan Pote peeking out a line there underneath Brandon Gonzalez. Thought better of it, tucks back in line, and we're back to three by three. Daytona is a little bit... What's the word I'm trying to think of? Narrower than Talladega. Talladega can usually hold them four wide. Not as much in the turns, but on the straightaways. But Daytona is more of a three-wide racetrack. Four wide, it's kind of iffy for these guys at this particular track, especially out of the exits of the corners, where the cars on the inside want to slide up the track on exit. And a lot of times you see a lot of door banging, a lot of contact, and that's when the wrecks get triggered. 
Johnny Gardner, though, tell you what, I'm, it's almost like watching Johnny Gardner in the Daytona 500. He had a super strong car then, even though he really never showed it during the qualifying results for the Daytona 500. But once the main event took place, man, that 10 car was hard to beat. And right now, he's looking hard to beat. Now he's got a battle for second behind him. James Qualls to the inside of Michael Norman. James Qualls, former winner this season at Sonoma. He'd love to be able to pick up a second win here this season. That would more than likely solidify him a spot in the chase. Qualls comes into this race 24th in points. Last week was a very difficult race for him at Manassas Junction as uh, he ended up dropping seven spots in the point standings. Trying to get a little bit of a rebound here tonight. It's William Duncan, he's got some help from Joshua Collard. And there you've got Charles Jackson. That's three drivers right there who have not found victory lane yet this season. They're going to try and fight their way up here. It's going to be interesting, too, to see just exactly where in the field is the best place to be because I ended up looking back at our restricted plate race two weeks ago at Madrid. And of all of our good finishers there, you had Bob Jones who finished in second. You had Levi McIntyre who finished in fourth. Those were drivers who started as far back as outside the top 36 in the qualifying results so they worked their way up through the field very quickly got themselves the front got themselves solid top five finishes now tonight it's Daytona it takes a little bit longer to get up to the front but it'll be interesting to see at the end of 24 laps if drivers that started at the rear of the field are going to be able to work their way up here to the front I think they're going to be able to though seems like plenty of time and with 24 laps too the big question as well is will they have to make pit stops our last restricted plate race at Madrid actually did rely on green flag pit stops and drivers having to utilize pit strategy as Duncan continues to lead. Charles Jackson now moves to second, Benjamin Miles to third, and there's DJ Curtis right now in fourth. So there's a chance for the Gibbs, Walter, and Mayonnaise racing team to, to work together. But looks like they're going to go three wide as they split the Benjamin Miles machine there for the second position. Here comes Joshua Michaels on the inside line. Joshua Michaels. Last week was a much better run for the 04 team as he's been on a bit of a struggling streak as of late. Last week was a much more usual performance by that BMW team. He's gonna get caught three wide now with Dylan Young on the inside line. Dylan Young actually won our last restricted play track venue at Madrid. Trying to pick up his second win of the season. Dylan Young actually with that victory last week or uh, two weeks ago, I should say. It didn't move him up into the top 35 in points. And then last week, he didn't have the best of runs at Manassas. So a second win would certainly help him out here. DJ Curtis leads the way. So DJ Curtis with leading a lap. That's going to give him an extra bonus point towards the uh, Rookie of the Year battle. I think he comes into this race only three points back from uh, Austin Mongold. So DJ, after his win at Coca-Cola, he is definitely putting the pressure now on Austin Mongold, who undoubtedly has been the most consistent of the two rookies, has more top 10 finishes, but DJ, he says, hey, it's still early in the season. I still got a chance to run you down. I'm going to do it if I can. You see Austin Mongold actually back there, caught in the middle three wide, not able to really make much progress towards the front right now. At the line, seven laps, or six laps completed on to lap number seven, and DJ Curtis, he could lead the most laps here tonight. That's another bonus point that would go towards him. Dylan Young there in second. James McLeod right now running in third. He had a great run at um, Louisiana. He had a somewhat decent run the week before that at Coca-Cola. But he still is outside the top 35 in points. Now he gets kicked to the outside by Pichu London. Pichu London ended up having a good run, as I recall, back at Madrid. Comes into this race 28th in the point stands. And there's Stephen Pollard, the third outside of the top 35 in points. Like I said, this kind of race seems to cater to the underdog. And right now I'm seeing a couple of drivers that could fit into that classification, like Stephen Pollard, the third, like James McLeod, that are up here at the front. With Jessica Shelton back there. She's starting to cut her way through the field right now behind William Duncan. She's currently scored in the seventh position. And two cars behind her is Cody Lamas. Shelton hasn't been to victory lane since Rockingham, North Carolina. That was her second win of the season. Her first win coming, of course, at the road course of Watkins Glen on fuel strategy. 
She's very good at these restrictor plate tracks and right now running very well. As a matter of fact, last week she had a good run as well at Manassas. She moved up to 17th in the point standings as she's trying to uh, make her first chase since I think it was... I want to say season, was it season 7 or season 8. I can't recall. Cody Lamas right behind her right now. Cody Lamas has never made a Snickers Cup Series chase. And right now he's got one victory. That coming to Kentucky. And last week he moved up into the 10th position in points. This is a great season right now for that 48 team. Started out pretty bad. A lot of things that were going wrong. Cody Lamas attributed to poor qualifying results. But... They fought through it ever since that win at Kentucky now. That team's really turned things around, and he's looking like a possible con contender for a spot in this season's chase. There's Michael Norman. This has not been the typical Michael Norman season. Michael Norman has pretty much been strong every single season in Snickers Cup, and this one, it just does not seem to go his way at all. He's running 20th in points, so it hasn't been an absolutely horrendous season, but Michael Norman... Earlier on in the season, we saw him up at the front battling quite a bit for the victory. A lot of times, though, losing those victories to the Twinix Racing drivers like Trent Dunham and Dylan Poteet. But Michael Norman, he really needs a victory if he's going to get himself into the chase for the championship. Tonight here at Daytona could be his best bet. As there's a couple of teammates behind him. That's uh, Kyle Matthews in the 24 and then a pole sitter, Jacob Lawler. Now, Lawler already has two wins this season. Would Lawler help a teammate like Goldow, like Kyle Matthews, who hasn't won yet this season, to the victory? That's an interesting scenario, too. I mean, you think of the dominating season that uh, Charles Samper had last year. Had three victories and was in the final four for the championship. This season, he can hardly buy himself a top five finish as he's currently outside the top 35 in points. So if he could get up here at some point, would his teammate Jessica Shelton be willing to push him to a victory? You got James McLeod there. He hasn't won yet this season. Would any Twinix Racing driver be willing to push him to the win? You know, this is an opportunity here unlike most tracks that we go to where teammates can actually work together and if you've got somebody that may be all but locked in like Trent Dunham, like Dylan Pote, like Jacob Lawler, like Jessica Shelton would they be willing to push one of their teammates to a victory to maybe get them in line for a potential chase spot now here's the interesting thing though obviously they'd love to be able to have another driver from their team get into the chase for the championship but you gotta think of the big picture would that come back to bite you and that driver that you helped get into the chase end up being one of your main competitors in the season finale for the championship? So, you know, there's a lot of strategy that's got to be played out, not just in tonight's race, but thinking forward towards the end of the season and the chase for the championship in general. Things are a little spread out at the front. That's basically because they haven't decided to race each other. DJ Curtis continues to lead the way. Dylan Young's been very content to ride in second. William Duncan there in third, and then fourth place Benjamin Miles. Now, a little interesting scenario here. You see William Duncan now stepping out of line, but he was content to ride behind Dylan Young. Those two were former teammates at once upon a time when Duncan drove the 12 and Dylan Young drove the 2. So keep that in mind. That could be something that could be in the works, kind of thinking back to old times when they were on the same team driving Fords together for, I think at the time, it was Young Motorsports. Right now, though, DJ Curtis has got to be loving this because DJ is leading lap after lap. That's allowing him to be able to be in contention for leading the most laps tonight, which means that's another bonus point against Austin Mongold for DJ to be able to try and run him down for the lead in the Rookie of the Year honors. Been a lot of drivers, actually, in the last couple of weeks who've really just turned it up. DJ's been one. Dylan Young has been another. Jacob Lawler. Cody Lamas as well. Dylan Young seems committed to the back bumper of DJ Curtis right now. DJ actually, after his uh, win back at Coca-Cola, has actually been able to move himself up outside, or inside, I should say, the top 35 in points. The thing he's got to do now is he's got to get himself inside the top 30 in the standings as he's going to try and make the chase of the championship in his rookie season been very few chases that we've had where there has not been at least one rookie that's made the chase and right now Austin Mongold no wins 
even though he's running second in the point stands coming to tonight's race. DJ Curtis, he has a win, but he's way down in the standings. So will that streak maybe end tonight? These two continue to run nose to tail. Then you got third place Kyle Matthews. Look at Zach Buchanan running up the hill there. Oh, pit stops are taking place, baby. DJ Curtis going to lead him down. Dylan Young, Kyle Matthews. I saw Austin Mongold coming to pit road along, I think, with William Duncan. And green flag pit stops taking place here on lap 15. And who decided to stay out? Zach Buchanan decided to stay out. So he'll lead that lap. Just about everybody on pit road this time. Washer's coming in now. Looks like Washer might have lost the draft. Trent Dunham also way back here. I don't know if those two lost the draft or not. Or did Trent pit earlier? Let's see if... Washer's in. Is Dunham coming in? No, I guess Dunham pitted a, a little bit earlier than all these guys. And now here comes Zach Cannon, Benjamin Miles, who decided to stay out. James Qualls, Brandon Gonzalez, Michael Norman. There's last week's winner, Ryan Acosta. Cole Daly, John Cittadino, Lyndon Wright will now give up, I think that's the 11th spot. He'll come in. EJ Curtis leaving pit road with his drafting buddy, Dylan Young. These two have got a good strategy worked out right now. If these two can continue to work together, I'm not sure there's going to be anybody that's going to be able to beat them. DJ continuing to lead the way probably after the cycle of these pit stops. I saw Trent Dunham. He came down two laps earlier than everybody else. and Or at least at least two lap, or one lap earlier than these leaders and two laps before uh, the second main body of cars. Not sure how that's going to work out for him. DJ is going to probably be scored as the leader this time around. No, nope, not yet. Still got to wait for that second wave of cars to be passed. They're passing him right now. DJ was scored in 10th, though, so that would mean that he'd be the highest running of the drivers right now that pitted that first time with the big group of cars. Bypassing Ryan Acosta. That's for 6th. About to pass Brandon Gonzalez, James Qualls. And then the next car should be Benjamin Miles that he'll have to catch. And Dylan Young's gotten separated from DJ Curtis. And Miles may actually come out with this lead. If he did come out ahead of all these guys. Oh no, wait, there's Zach Buchanan. Is it Buchanan that's going to be the leader? Let's see, scoring monitor update says, yes it is. Zach Buchanan after the cycle of pit stops is the new race leader. So JBM Motorsports out in front with Zach Buchanan, his good buddy DJ Curtis cycles into second. Dylan Young actually just bypassed him for third. Trent Dunham's actually up to fourth, so apparently that early strategy helped him. He's fourth place. James Qualls is now fifth. Brandon Gonzalez is sixth. Seventh place is Ryan Acosta. Eighth, William Duncan. Ninth, Benjamin Miles. And Joshua Michaels now completes the top ten. And here's the battle for 11th. This is from 11th through 15th. Mongold, Matthew Cittadino, Daly, and Norman. At the line, we got a total of six to go. And Zach Buchanan's about to get reeled in. At that big lead after the cycle of pit stops, and now he's a sitting duck. Here comes Trent Dunham. Going to slingshot to the high side. Is anybody going to go with him? Looked like Dylan Young thought about going low, and he's going to, and he's got James Qualls helping him. They're going to split Zach Buchanan three wide. Dunham high side, Dylan Young low side, Young's got a big push heading into three, Dunham goes down to block, can't do it. Zach Buchanan starts to fall back here, Dylan Young is going to uh, try and block the inside line, but he might not be able to do it, James Qualls looks low, Young going to be able to keep him in his rear view mirror, and now Trent Dunham's caught in the high side with no friends. Inside line, Dylan Young, Qualls, Gonzalez, Curtis, and Zach Buchanan as Ryan Acosta's now reeled in this group. It's now seven cars up at the front. And I don't want to say it, but this is looking so much like our Daytona 500 when there were only just a handful of cars up there battling for the victory. That's what it's looking like right now, all due to those green flag pit stops. Now James Qualls will go to the front. The last time James Qualls went to victory lane twice in a season was his rookie season back in season eight when he made the chase for the championship in only his first year in Snickers competition. And here tonight, he's looking for his second win of the season. There's Brandon Gonzalez, defending champ. He wants to go to victory lane for a second time this season. Look at Ryan Acosta. He's pushing Zach Buchanan up towards the front. Ryan Acosta 
Think about him. He'd love to go back-to-back -back wins. He won last week at Manassas. He wants to win here tonight at Daytona. DJ Curtis, he'd love to be able to win in his second restricted plate race here this season. You got Trent Dunham right there. Look at the drivers that have won at restricted plate tracks that are up here at the front. You got Dylan Young, our winner from Madrid. DJ Curtis, our winner from Coca-Cola. And Trent Dunham, our Daytona 500 winner. All three of them up here at the front. As here comes Ryan Acosta, three wide for the lead. These seven might be the seven to battle it out, and they are battling to the max. Ryan Acosta now going for the top position. He's going to try and win his second race in a row. But these guys, as they're battling, maybe, just maybe, there's a slight hope for these two right here. William Duncan, Benjamin Miles, who've been running nose to tail, maybe to reel them in. They cut it down by about three-tenths that lap, but time is running out, too. Three to go, as now Ryan Acosta leads. Brandon Gonzalez now into second. James Qualls now looking for third underneath Zach Buchanan. Who of these drivers is going to win? Out of these drivers, five, no, make it six of them, have been to victory lane. The only driver that hasn't won yet this season in this front group is Zach Buchanan. Ryan Acosta won last week at Manassas. Brandon Gonzalez won at Pocono. Qualls won at Sonoma. Dunham won the 500. DJ won at Coca-Cola. And Dylan Young won at Madrid. Zach Buchanan, though, has not found victory lane this season. He wants to, and he's the lone man out right now. Then you got two other drivers trying to reel them in who haven't found victory lane yet this season. William Duncan in the 83, Benjamin Miles in the 84, two to go as they head into one. Ryan Acosta doing a lot of mirror driving, and that's what he's got to do. Brandon Gonzalez right in his back bumper, though. Then there's Trent Dunham, then there's James Qualls. Dunham peeks out of line for the second position off of Brandon Gonzalez. Is anybody going with him? Doesn't look like it. Everyone sticks to the high side. Trent Dunham with no friends down low has to tuck back in line behind Gonzalez in the third position. And William Duncan's picked up the slipstream of this lead group. He and Miles are in the thick of this as well. Don't count them out yet. But there's one more lap to go. Here comes Dunham to the inside. He's got Zach Buchanan now helping him. Chevrolet's working the bottom. Ryan Acosta goes down to block. White flag in the air. One more time to go here at Daytona. Here comes Trent Dunham. Help from Zach Buchanan. Buchanan shoves the Sega Strong Chevrolet to the lead. Ryan Acosta no help. Help. Zach Buchanan committed to the back bumper of Trent Dunham. But will he make a move on him down the back straightaway here? And if he does, will somebody go with him? Zach Buchanan right behind Trent Dunham. Ryan Acosta there, but he's a bit back. Will the drafting help come if Zach Buchanan makes a move? Looks like he's waiting for turn four. Trying to suck up to the back bumper of the Sega Chevrolet. Can he do it? Trent Dunham going to try and block. Zach Buchanan waiting for his moment. He peeks to the bottom. Now he goes back in line. Will he dive bomb here at the line? No, he won't. Trent Dunham is going to pick up the Daytona sweep here in Season 10. He wins the 500, and he wins the night race here at Daytona. The Daytona sweep has never been done in, in Snickers Cup Series history. It's done here tonight by Trent Dunham. And give the assist to Zach Buchanan. Zach could have easily left Trent Dunham out to dry. He could have split it three wide. Mentioned that Zach Buchanan was the only one up here in this lead group that hadn't found victory lane yet this season. But he shoved Trent Dunham to the lead down the back straightaway. And Trent Dunham will go to victory lane for the third time this season in Snickers Cup Series. And the points leader is going to grow his points lead even more here tonight. And I think we can safely say we are looking at our first confirmed driver in this season's Snickers Cup Series chase for the championship. It's never been done before. Never has a driver won both the 500 and the night race at Daytona International Speedway in the same season. But Trent Dunham, he's out to make history all the time here this season. He broke the winless streak, broke the curse at the Daytona 500. And here tonight, he goes to victory lane. And this is the second time in his career he's gone to victory lane at least three times in a single season. The first time was back in season eight. So Trent Dunham goes to victory lane tonight. Pretty much all but locks himself up a spot in the chase for the championship. Zach Buchanan... Man, if he'd had somebody to go with him, he probably would have made a move. But Ryan Acosta was a little ways back and really wouldn't have been much drafting help there out of four. But Zach Buchanan was committed to push Trent Dunham there. That was a, a really, uh, a, well, I don't know what what to call it. More like a, uh, a generous 
push, if you will, by Zach Buchanan, who could have easily gone for that win himself, but he'll have to settle for a second. Ryan Acosta, what a great follow-up finish after his win last week, a third place. Brandon Gonzalez, the defending champ, looking to continue to make a case for himself to be in this season's chase. Trying to go for back-to-back -back championships. He'll get fourth. DJ Curtis, still continuing solid runs. He gets fifth tonight. Gets rookie of the race, and I think he led the most laps, which I think means that he locks up rookie of the race honors, gets a bonus point for leading a lap, and gets a bonus point for leading the most laps, which I think means it's a tie for the rookie points lead now. So that'll be interesting. Then you got Dylan Young. He's been... Stepping it up after his win at Madrid. He'll get 6th tonight. William Duncan's going to end up with 7th. He just barely caught that lead group at the end. James Qualls will finish in 8th. Great run for him. Benjamin Miles in ninth, And Austin Mongold, he got beat by DJ Curtis here tonight, but he still comes away with yet another top 10 finish for that rookie. But he came in 16 points behind Trent Dunham tonight. Trent's going to grow it by about 14 points with the bonus points of the win included, which means that Trent Dunham's going to have at least a 30-point advantage heading into next week, maybe more. We'll find all that out once the points are shown. But what a win here tonight for Trent Dunham. Third win of the season, second win of the season at Daytona as he completes the Daytona sweep and pretty much confirms himself a spot in this season's chase for the championship. Thanks everybody for watching tonight's race here from Daytona. If you enjoyed tonight's race, be sure to give us a video like, subscribe to become part of the crew today. After tonight, we have only five more races, including the regular season finale at Rockingham, North Carolina, before we end up having our chase for the championship compiled for 10 races in the final ever battle for a Snickers Cup Series championship. Hope you'll be joining us as we're going to continue on the chase to the chase here on the History Sports Channel. We'll now show your official full finish results from tonight's event, your overall point standings, and your rookie points, which I'm pretty sure are tied, heading into next week. As you've been watching a production of the SRA, Offline Racing at its best. Trent Dunham sweeps Daytona here in Season 10. We'll see you guys next time. Good night. Hey, thanks for watching another video here on the MCRA Sports and Gaming Channel. If you enjoyed the content you just saw, be sure to give this video a like. If you want to join the crew today, be sure to hit up that subscribe button. And if you want to know what's going on in the world of MCRA for news and updates, check out the Facebook and Twitter links down below too. Once again, thanks for watching everybody, and I will see you guys next time. I'm out.